The last topic that I want to talk about this week is plotting data in matrices. We're going to be using the function plot. The simplest way to use it is the syntax plot x comma y. Plots vector y versus vector x. We're going to be using this function to plot data that we collect from time series movies later in the course. But for now, let's just use it to plot a simple function, sine. I feel like I've been repeating the advice to look at the help for each function a lot now, so this time I'll just tell you the syntax. The syntax sine x computes the sine of a vector of numbers. Now the sine function is defined over the angle of a circle, so to plot a full sine curve we will need to plot the function between the interval 0 to 2 pi. Here's where the universal constant pi will come in handy. To generate this interval we are going to use another function called linspace. The syntax linspace start, comma, stop, comma, num points generates a vector of linearly spaced numbers. The vector will start at the start value and end at the stop value and be num points long. Now if you're thinking that this function seems to behave similar to the colon operator, then you're right. The big difference is that when using the colon operator to generate a range, you specify the spacing between the numbers. When using linspace, the function computes that for you based on the start and end values. So this function is a bit more convenient when we are trying to generate a vector for evaluating a function over a given range. So go ahead, create a vector from 0 to 2 pi with 100 points. I'll give you a few seconds to try and enter the command yourself. Feel free to pause the video if you need a bit more time. Okay, let's switch over to MATLAB. To create the x vector, we can use the command x equals linspace 0, 2 star pi, 100. Notice that this time I'm using a semicolon to suppress the output of this function because printing out 100 numbers would just clutter up the command window. Now let's use the function sine x to compute the sine of this vector, y equals sine x. And you can check in the workspace that both x and y are 1 by 100 vectors. So now let's plot this function by using the plot function plot x comma y. We can see that a new figure window pops up showing the plot of the function. This is a good time for us to look at the figure window. The first thing I want to show you are the tools that you can access. To access the tools, you have to hover over the plot area, which is this white square. When you do this, you can see that a number of icons appear on the top right. The important ones here are the third icon, which is the data tips. You can see what the icons are by hovering over them. Then the two icons that look like the magnifying glasses with a plus and minus sign are for zooming in and out of the plot. Let's look at the data tip tool. Go ahead and click it. You will see that the button turns blue. When you hover over the plot, the cursor changes to a crosshair. You can now click on anywhere along the plot, and a little box will pop up telling you the x and y values of that point. So you can use this tool to read values off the graph. If you hover over the small black circle of the data tip, the mouse will change into a forward direction arrow. You can now drag this data tip around to look at different values along the curve. If you want to create a second data tip, maybe to compare different values, hold on the shift key, then click on the plot. You can also create another data tip by right clicking on the plot, selecting create new data tip. Notice that the shortcut for the create new data tip appears on the menu. Once you've selected it, click on the plot again to create a new data tip. Finally, to delete the data tips, you can just right click on the plot, and select delete all data tips. Now when you're done, it is really important that you deselect the data tip tool. If not, you might find that you're accidentally creating a number of data tips that you might not need. Let's quickly look at the zoom icon. Typically, I only use the zoom in icon, which is the magnifying glass with the plus symbol. Let's go ahead and click it. You can now drag to select the region to zoom into. You can zoom in several times if you want. When you're done, you can double click to reset the plot. We're going to be using these tools a lot to inspect our images in a couple of weeks, so feel free to play around and get familiar with it. Okay, I'm going to dock this figure window into my MATLAB interface by clicking on this little downward facing icon. This just lets me have this figure in the interface so we can see what's going on for the rest of this video. Now, no scientific plot is ever complete without labels. 
To add labels to the axes, you will use the functions xlabel and ylabel. Both of these functions take in a text input. Let's label the x-axis x, and the y-axis can be sine of x. Notice that the labels appear as soon as you press enter. Now we can also title the plot if we want using the function title. Maybe let's call it example plot. Just a quick note. For those of you who are familiar with LaTeX, you can use LaTeX commands in the labels and the title. So for example, if you wanted to include units, say of microns, you could enter x label backslash mu from the symbol mu m. You can see that MATLAB renders that with the Greek character mu. Okay, we've seen how to make a single plot. How do we get a second plot on the graph? Well, it turns out that this is pretty simple. You simply give the plot function a second set of x and y vectors. So let's quickly define a new vector y2 equals cos of x, which computes the cosine of x. Now let's plot both the plots on the same graph. Okay, note that both these plots here share the same x values but you can obviously use different ones if you need to. So let's run this. Now one thing to note, since we already had a figure window open, MATLAB simply replaced the plot in the window. This is fine for the example, but it's something to be aware of. And we can see now that we have two plots. Now if you're unsure which plot is which, you can label them by using the function legend. The legend function takes in text inputs and will label the plots in the order they were plotted in. So if we look at our previous command, we plotted y, which was the sine curve first, then y2, which was the cosine. So we can enter in legend sine, comma, cosine. And we can see that this appears on the plot. Now there are a lot more features in the plot function that you can change, such as line color or the style. I'm going to again encourage you to read the help for the plot function. Actually, in this case, because the documentation is pretty long, you might find it easier to look at doc plot instead.